Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I think right now, if you're a small channel, you're probably getting frustrated. You're like, I know what I want to teach my audience, but I don't know if what I'm teaching them is what they want. Does that make sense? I know on my channel, I talk about turning your passion into profits. And I really encourage people to take something that they love to do, that they enjoy doing and teach it to somebody else. But here's where step two comes in. You've started your channel, you're sharing something that you love and that you know that your audience would love to hear, but which parts of that are they really paying attention to or what do they want more of? That's what I'm gonna show you today. I'm gonna to show you how to go into your analytics as a small channel and look for those certain key things that's gonna tell you what your audience was once so that you can provide that for them. So stick around and we're gonna dig into four different areas so that you can really serve your audience and give them what they want. Remember, my channel is about turning your passion into profit so that you can make some money online and get rid of that nine to five job and start building a business online. And it really does start with YouTube and it starts with creating the channel first and finding that passion that you can keep doing so that you love your work. It's that simple. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and every week I'll provide you with a new video. Now, before we dive into analytics, I want you to think about why does YouTube let us use their platform for free? Why would they do that? This huge platform, they are actually allowing us to get on here for free and we can earn some money. Why would they do that as a business model? Well, remember, they're making money too. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about monetization just so you get a, an idea of how that works. I know that right now, if you're not monetized, YouTube changed their policy where they're allowed to put ads on your video and you don't make anything. Once you're monetized, once you have a thousand subscribers, 4,000 hours of watch time within a 12 month period, there's lots of videos out there that dive in and get into details. But once you're monetized, YouTube will put video uh, ads on your video and you get part of that. Okay. Um, and it, and it gets complicated. I've actually made a video about that. I'll put it down below where I talk about RPM and CPM and it gets pretty deep really you don't need to worry about it right now if you're not monetized but that's how they make money now who do they choose well think about it if you're making videos and nobody's watching them nobody's clicking that button and looking at it then youtube is going to go they're not making us any money so they're going to move on to somebody else so your goal is to make sure people are watching your videos and they have retention that and we're going to talk about that today but that's kind of your goal so what are the things that you need to do besides have great content which you already do but there's some other little things that you can do as well so that's what we're going to talk about today the first thing i want to talk about let's dive in i want to talk about when you upload your video make sure that you have a good title that people will be able to click it and they know exactly what you're going to talk about. Now, I know a lot of people talk about clickbait and that's like they have a title that makes you you're going to make a million dollars a month and people are, oh, what, what do I need to do? Or weight loss does that a lot. Weight lose 10 pounds in seven days. And we all hit that button. How many times have you been enticed to do that? And then you read this thing where, oh, I have to work at it. I have to eat right. I have to exercise. Right. That made you click, but it wasn't quite what you expected. So I don't do clickbait. I really try to focus on make sure my title is very clear and it answers a question. So sometimes I try to put my myself into my audience is mind and what are kind of what are the questions that I would ask and then as the YouTube creator I want to answer those questions. So I'm going to give you an example here. This is one of my videos that I created and it's how to feature other YouTube channels. So it's something that people probably would like to know how to do. Maybe you've had your channel for a while and you're like, why would I feature other channels? How do I do that? So my title is very, very clear what it is. Here's where it helps you to get searched and found. You want to take your title and put those same words that you have in your title into your description there's a lot of controversy about description i've seen people say use up all 5,000 characters that you have and then i've had people tell me you know use 2000 i think you need to put a description that describes what you're doing and don't get caught up in numbers just speak honestly about what it's about and make sure you use the words your keywords obviously featured channels is my keywords here i always put in 
chapters. I always go in and help people so that they can find exactly what I'm talking about at certain points within my video, because this is another way. If somebody just wants to know, um, how do you feature, how, how do you feature other channels? They can go right here to 244, how to edit feature channels down here at 414. So if somebody said, um, put that in the search bar, how do you edit feature channels? My video might pop up and it's going to show right here at 414. Again, some YouTubers will say they don't like to do that because they want people to watch the whole thing. I disagree. I think if somebody wants to come in and only get one part of my video, if only one part of my video is going to answer a question, then I'm happy to oblige. I am all about no fluff, get right to the stuff. And I have no problem with that. All right. So that's why I do it. And that'll have to be a choice for you. Now, the next thing you're going to look at are keywords and you're going to scroll down a little bit and you'll find that you will enter these while you're uploading a video. And I do have a video above about how to upload a video. And I do use TubeBuddy to help me find my keywords. So that video is about that, how to use TubeBuddy to upload your video. I have really taken time to make sure that my keywords are long tail keywords. They're answering questions. They're actually the way people would be typing things in. If you're a small channel, you're competing with somebody that might have a million subscribers or 500,000 subscribers, their videos are gonna pop up first. They've already done the work. They put their time in, blood, sweat, and tears, and YouTube is already presenting them. So you have to, I can't just write feature channels. That's not gonna get my video to pop up. So I have to answer questions. So look, let's look down here, how to feature channels on your YouTube channel, how to feature other channels on your YouTube channel, how to edit feature channels on, it's very repetitive, but look here, they're all being, um, they all have ranking scores. They're all being found. If that makes sense. The only one that doesn't have a ranking score is my first name, Vanessa. I can go in and I could delete that because it's not even helping the channel. Um, just put an X there. I, when, when I have days that maybe I've got everything caught up and I just want to sit here, um, you know, do something simple. I'll go back and look at some of my older videos and go in and see, are, are my different keywords being searched or are they being ranked? And I might go in and revise them a little bit. So that is something that you can do. You can go back and recycle some videos and get better. The other thing that you're going to look at when you now you might say, why are you showing me this? Why are you showing me about uploading? Because I want you to go back and look at these things because when you're new, you think you're doing everything right. And I will, I promise you, you'll go back and go, oh my gosh, I can't believe I used those keywords. I remember when I first started, my goal was, oh, I'm going to use all kinds of different keywords that will, um, so different people looking for different things will find me. Well, that confuses the algorithm. You have to be very, very concise. If you learn nothing out from this, nothing else from this video, remember that niche it down, make sure everything is about feature channels. Like I just did. I don't have other things on here. It's just all about the video and it's going to, it's been found and searched because it's very, very clear. It's very concise. All right. So that's the first thing that I wanted to talk about. Now we're going to go into analytics. Now that you've been around for a while, maybe you have 2000 subscribers, maybe you have 5,000 small channels. I see is under 10,000. Now, remember I told you what YouTube wants you to do. They want you to keep people on your videos. The longer they're on there, the more ads that they can show, the more money that YouTube can make and the more money you can make once you're monetized. So you want to keep people on there. And obviously you want to give such great content that people keep watching. How do I know? Now, if you go into your analytics and you look under engagement and then come over here where it says average view duration, that is not what you really want to look at. And it says three minutes is my average view duration. Well, the problem is that's not really giving me good information because I have videos anywhere from two minutes all the way up to 25 minutes. And an average of three minutes isn't going to give me a true reading. Like, what if I have a, a video for 25 minutes and people have been watching it for 55% of the video? That's what I want to look at. I want to see the percentage, the, 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 the view um, retention percentage. Okay. So here's how you find that. You're going to go over here to overview and then you're going to scroll down and you can see some of your top videos right there where it has the average view duration. And then at the bottom of that, you're going to write, go to see more. And that's going to give you 
all of your videos from your channel in order and the ones that have the highest retention rate. And that's what you want to look at. What are the videos that my audience is watching that they are sticking around? Now here is um, Social Sprout. This is the retention percentage viewed, 42% of the video. Anything 40% or more is really, really good. Um, you can see here I've won for 54% Hootsuite versus Buffer and keep going down. So this it's what what is going to help you by looking at your analytics what is it that my audience wants to see more of and that's how i figure it out i come in here and i look at the ones that they're hanging around now you can get really detailed and you can open up that video and you can see where the retention dropped maybe you're doing things like rambling at the end of your video and you can cut some of that off but i don't want to get into that as much as showing you where to find the analytics and what I use these for from a very sim simple perspective is to find out what are the videos that have the best retention. And I see that as that's the content that people want to see. This is the last an analytic that I think that you can look at that's going to help you to figure out what your audience wants to see more of. Go back to your analytics, go under subscribers. If people are subscribing to your channel, then they must have liked a video that you made. They must want to come back for more. So what is it that they're subscribing to? If another way to look and find out what they want, go here, select subscribers, go to see more, and then you're going to see individual videos and see how many subscribers that they've been bringing in. So go ahead and scroll down and you can see in this column right here, subscribers again, match them up. These top five videos are bringing in most of my subscribers. I can go over here and find out what my topics are and give them more of that. Um, I'm not saying only do those topics. You might've really, um, have something that you're talking about and your top five videos are about the same thing, like how to make money online. That's great. Maybe you don't want to talk about that every day, but it does give you an idea of what people are looking for. So that's going to help you grow your channel and that's going to help you get more subscribers, more retention and more click through rates. I hope this was helpful. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and leave me a message down there in the comments. Let me know what you think.